Even closer. Now we're talking. <laughs> All right. Oh, now these are not vlogs because Timothy doesn't want to do vlogs. What do you call these, Timothy? Coffee talk. Coffee talk with ice cream. I was going to try to think of something that would talk that would describe Sal, but then I, then I cut myself off. Yeah, I think <laughs> I like I like the word sexploration. <laughs> <laughs> The more, the more I think about it, the more I like the word sex <laughs> Um Before we go explore that, I was going to say that I did want to gauge some interest of the people, the wonderful people watching this video, because we're about to invest in you, and hopefully you will invest in us, but we're thinking about doing our next three retreats, and we're considering, based on some responses, email us at robbrosagmail.com, Arizona in April, Maui in May. In June, no, in June. What do you think wow. about that? I just love that you got the name, the first <laughs> letter uh. of the state and the month matching. <laughs> wow. You guys blow my mind every time. <laughs> I'm ambitious about alliterations. Yeah. So is Persa. Well, oh, what, yeah. real quick, why people might be like, what's this guy know about sex exploration? How would you feel comfortable? Or even more importantly, how would you feel uncomfortable describing what you mean by sex exploration. I think it started with the idea that I, I was always into understanding my sexuality and my partner's sexuality. And the more I spent time trying to understand that, the more I pushed myself out from my comfort zone, the more it became obvious that I was my orientation was different than most of the people that come to our car, come to row browser streets or that I go in other places. A lot of people are willing to talk about their childhood issues, they're willing to talk about their uh, you know problems with, at work, but most people do not want to go what is most sacred to us, what they feel in the bedroom. And that is something that I'm very comfortable with. And the more I realize that I am more comfortable than the people around me, the more I feel that I can give back by talking about our sexual orientations, our what we do, what turns us on, what we expect from others, and how can we improve ourselves. Mm. So for you, the sex exploration inside in bed, how would it help someone outside of outside the bedroom? Usually what happens to you, like what, what creates obstacles for intimacy? Because sex is a very intimate thing. And if, you, if you're finding yourself being distant from dating somebody, or if you're finding yourself being distant from like flirting with somebody, it's, I find that in most cases that lies within your sexual frustration. Like there might be something that you feel insecure about. There might be something that you feel maybe like not normal. Mm -hmm. And once we create an environment where you can talk about those things, we see that people's life improve drastically because now they're not that afraid to flirt with somebody. They're not afraid to date somebody. They're not afraid to be naked in front of somebody. Physically uh, or metaphorically or both? Both. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that's important because it holds people down. Like our, most, most of the stuff that I, I observe with people who have issues in their relationships, they have these taboos or they have these shuls in their sexual experiences. And those experiences <laughs> make it really hard for them. <laughs> and uh, what was the word? Shuds? Shuls. Taboos and shuds. Where are sh shuds? Like shuld on here? Oh, shoulds. Okay, yeah, like you should. Okay. Well, you know, I definitely seen and experienced Sal bringing a lot of clarity to people's uh, <laughs> their own lives. Now, for me, on the other hand, I am an advocate of. Now, I I don't promote having many sexual partners. I don't believe in that. Um, I don't think Sal said he was. I didn't say he did. I'm just telling you my. my you said me on the other hand. Did I say on the other hand? I thought you did. Yeah. Rewind. I don't think it's... But there was some <laughs> insinuation that I felt. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, there might be an insinuation, but what I'm trying to say is that I 
only believe in one, if very little, sexual partners. Um, now, I have seen some st really crazy stuff take place at our retreats with the assistance of Sal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just stick with me for a second, guys. Stick with me. Where someone might be struggling with their sexual desires. This is what's really cool for me. I see people start struggling with their overwhelming sexual desires. Um, and it's in most cases because they don't share their desires openly with anybody. They don't talk about them. They don't express all those weird things that they have in their head. And when I've seen them share those or uh, bring those to the surface at our retreats, they go away. And that I am a fan of. Mm -hmm. I, like this, I like to be able to, to control our sexual desires in one of the ways... In a healthy way. In a healthy way. And one of those ways is by not necessarily suppressing them. Not, I'm not saying going acting on them, but at least conversing, sharing with other people. And your feelings about them. Yeah. Good point, Timothy. And I think most people hesitate to share because they think they're so outside the normal, whatever the normal is. Because you don't, they don't hear other people share. But once you have people sharing their own sexual desires or fantasies or you know, their inclinations. It actually opens up the space that you realize, wow, I'm not that different. You know, like that person shared something that I could relate to. And then it creates much more comfortable situation for them to share. Like before I went to my first role browser retreat, that sex, you know, I was fascinated by sex. And I was trying to have it as often as possible. And I was trying to have as many partners as possible. And, but then I interacted with these two gentlemen mm -hmm. who had very, very different views. And my first reaction was to mock them. I'm like, that's funny, you know, that's ridiculous. But now after one and a half years of doing this self-exploration uh, within myself and with people around me, I realized that, you know, I'm in a place where I don't want to have multiple partners. I I wanna I wanna take things slow. I wanna you know this like I know this works because it helped me to be more peaceful within myself. Well, thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah, yeah and That's I want to entertain a thought here. Um, you know, sexual crimes. Let's say you know, like sexual crimes. What if it wasn't considered so taboo to talk about sex openly and to have conversations like this? I would be inclined to say that sexual crimes would decrease because I feel like what happens is these people who I don't necessarily think there's anything innately wrong with them, they suppress, they suppress, they suppress their sexual thoughts, feelings, and until one day they just snap and they go do something that's totally inappropriate. It reminds me of uh, no. Alcoholic Anonymous in the sense that you were saying that if they had a place to discuss their desires or their thoughts weird st or weird their thoughts. shameful, especially their shameful yeah. desires, mm -hmm. that the sexual crimes would go way down. I think that's sort of an idea behind AA that they share, it's a place to share all these desires they don't necessarily want to have. Mm -hmm. And I think it decreases alcoholism quite a bit for those people that do that. Yeah. It actually creates, like, there's a, there's a belief within the AA system that, you know, participating in a meeting and saying, sharing, is, creates the same dopamine surge that one would get from alcohol. Mm. So actually, people replace that addiction oh, I can see that. with addiction of going to the meeting. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, that's a great mentality in my opinion in the sense that, because when a lot of people try to quit something, they, and all they think they can do is, I'll just quit it, I'll quit it, I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to smoke cigarettes, I won't smoke today, I won't smoke today, all they're doing is thinking about smoking, yeah. or, you know, not smoking, it's still about smoking, mm -hmm. whereas they can replace it, you know, that's why I think, like, maybe, a much simpler is like chewing gum, or even better yet, go get something you get better high off than you would from tobacco, mm -hmm. it's more healthy, whether it's working out, surfing, sharing, yeah. Sleeping. Some people, you know, some people forgot to sleep. And another thing is, um, as a believer in God, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people have things that have happened in their past, a lot of them being sexual, that they are very not proud of. They carry around the shame and guilt. 
But, you know, as a believer in God, I believe that to carry that shame around and keep it to yourself and not tell everybody about it, about your secrets, is also concealing God's grace and His forgiveness that He has for us. Because I believe that God is perpetually forgiving us for our sins. I'm not saying go out and commit sins, but I'm saying if we can be like, hey, yeah, look, I did this in my past. I committed this sin, this sexual sin. And you know why I'm here to, why I'm excited to tell you about it? Because I'm also excited to tell you that I've been forgiven, get forgiven for it. Preach on, brother. I'm excited. He, they're excited to talk about how what they did does not, is not them. What they may have done in the past is not them. Or what happened to them in the past is not them. They're, they're greater than that. Yeah. Also, one thing I would want to explore more. People, they have desires and they judge the, those desires. And then they have actions, which they think is a result of those desires. Whereas I come to understand that what we have is desire and what our actions are. There's a huge amount of knowledge. Like if you're ignorant about how to realize your desire or how your desire could be enacted in a real life situation, what... You know, if you don't know any better, you will do stuff that will be deemed bad or illegal or like you will feel like an outcast. But because this knowledge is not shared, you know, like people, you don't turn on the TV or you don't turn on your computer and have access to sexual knowledge. You, you have access to sex, like the commercials have sex, porn sites have sex, but you don't have information like what like over the centuries, what people come up with, what they thought, what they experimented with. There are universities that are doing research on sex, but we don't read the reports because it's not, it's not something that the media puts in front of us. And some part of sex exploration is to share that knowledge. See, this, get, this, this got a lot deeper than I was expecting. We need a, um, that's a good thing we're, inter, we're uh, intermittently putting juicing footage in here. Oh, is that what you're doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should, I, should, I be doing the, should I be the one doing the juicing? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about there could be some funny things about that. But um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, leave you, we'll leave you looking for more. Um, we're going to have to go work out now. Uh, Sal's on Facebook. Do you have, if someone wants to reach out to you after this, do you have any way to do that? How would you recommend that? Facebook or? Facebook, email. What is on here? Well, my email. It's probably easier to put down okay. as a link. It's S L H T T N K Y at gmail.com. I'll put his email in the description. Where like one of those top three lines. If you want to do some more sex exploration with Sal. Um Okie dokie. And we'll see you next time. And remember email us at robberaz at gmail.com if you are interested in one of those uh, three retreats or all of them. Tune in next time for priceless advice that guides your way. Coffee and ice cream. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Later, Gators. <laughs>